Our goal is to protect lives and property. Now, we know that this evacuation order that I'm issuing is going to be inconvenient for some people. It's going to be inconvenient. But we do not want to risk one South Carolina life in this hurricane. I'm ordering a mandatory, not voluntary, but mandatory evacuation of everybody that is in those zones. The state offices and the schools will not be open at all tomorrow. This may be inconvenient. This is a very dangerous hurricane. But we are not going to gamble with the lives of the people of South Carolina. Not a one. Well, they're on it. They are on it, boy. Wow. South Carolina. The governor calls for mandatory evacuations. And he's closed state offices and schools tomorrow, Tuesday, when the storm is not supposed to even be here until Thursday or the wee hours of Friday morning. But he's closing the schools and state offices tomorrow. Why? Don't know why. Maybe because of the mandatory evacuation and everybody has to get out of uh, South Carolina, the coastal region. All right. Um, yeah. This is actually a tree video, but listen to what they're reporting on this hurricane coming into South Carolina and North Carolina. We know storm surge is a, um, is a threat, a big time worry with these storms. As a matter of fact, we're one year out now from Hurricane Irma when it made landfall in the, in the Keys, in the Florida Keys. Let's bring in from the- One year out. Isn't it interesting, September 11th, now we have another September 11th. The hurricane is not supposed to arrive until at least September 13th. But state offices and schools are closed tomorrow. All right. The American Red Cross spokesperson, uh, Jonathan McNamara, on if residents and officials are prepared for what Adam was talking about, Hurricane Florence. Jonathan joins us uh, by phone. Um, are they ready to the best that we can be ready, Jonathan? Yeah, absolutely. So what we're doing is we're working with our partners at the local, state, and federal level to um, identify resources in the Red Cross system. So we're moving supplies, we're moving volunteers into both Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, as well as mobilizing the entire Red Cross network so that we can be able to respond to a variety of different scenarios. And that's why we're... Okay, so the Red Cross is on it. Eh, they're on it. Let's talk about Hurricane Florence, uh, now a dangerous Category 4 storm as it moves toward the East Coast. It is expected to make landfall either later Thursday night or early uh, the wee hours of Friday morning. Mandatory evacuations are underway for parts of uh, the Carolinas. CNN meteorologist Allison Chinchar is tracking Florence for us. And Allison, tell me more. Right, so the concern now is how much more intensification does this storm go? Do you see what I see? Before even in their images, you can see how this hurricane is kind of being sheared off. And you can see this very defined line right here. Frequencies are being used. Okay, let's go on. Before it finally makes landfall, right now it's a very powerful Category 4 storm. Winds 130 miles per hour. There's a right angled shape in this hurricane. That should tell everybody something is very wrong. Now, this woman is just a script reader. That's all she does. She reads scripts. Our gusting to 140 miles per hour. The track still eventually likes to make landfall somewhere between Virginia and South Carolina. Now, this does not mean these are the only areas that will be impacted. This just basically tells you where the center of circulation is expected to be and the strongest winds. But rain is actually going to be probably the biggest concern with this particular storm. We expect widespread amounts of rain well over 10 inches. But there will be some locations that could pick up in excess of 20 if not even 30 inches of rain. Now, the question is where those areas are going to be. Who's going to get the most rain? That ultimately will be determined on where that landfall location is there. The point is that all of the models are agreeing that there is going to be a tremendous amount of rain dumped, but that's not the only concern. And I want people to realize that cone that shows Virginia to South Carolina, that's 
only for the center of circulation. Everywhere from Florida all the way up to Massachusetts is likely to have some type of impact, whether that's rip currents, strong gusty winds, beach erosion, or even the hazardous surf. Those are all likely to have where you see this purple color on this map. So say if you live... All right. Oh, boy. Well, our reporting, our mainstream media reporting has really changed. Uh, and governors of states declaring states of emergency way before anything actually occurs. And now these storms, well, they impact thousands of miles. Oh, well, Hurricane Florence rapidly intensifying, likely to hit North or South Carolina Thursday. Uh, yeah, if this is the case, well, it takes over all of South Carolina, North Carolina, pretty much all of Virginia, into West Virginia, a bit of Tennessee and Kentucky. Will we be hit with massive rain? Uh, who's to tell? East Coast prepares for Florence. People filling sandbags, get supplies. What is this, a generator? And how obese our population is. So, this is Florence. And Florence is, according to IntelliFast, 140 miles per hour, Category 4. And, well, it's moved. The tracking, this is the tracking as of 5 p.m. on the East Coast. And it looks like just a bit of South Carolina is going to be hit and North Carolina is in the target zone. But our governor here in South Carolina has decided to close schools, close state offices, declare a state of emergency, and issue or declare mandatory evacuations. And now the hurricane is off the coastal area of South Carolina. Oh, right, that purple area from all the way Florida, all the way on up to Massachusetts. So, you know what our state officials like to do? They love to take care of us because we can't take care of ourselves. They love to protect us. And look at how lovely all of the geoengineering is. This is not Mother Nature. This is man. Mother Nature does not create straight-lined clouds, but man does, and you'll see them right here in the United States as well. Oof, boy. Well, forget about reality. What we have being reported is an awful lot of disasters and chaos that gets the population all worked up. That being said, doesn't even matter if this is a hurricane or not. If this is photoshopped onto a telecast, as you can see, nothing on radar at all. And while this says 140 mile per hour winds, where's in truth by grace when we need her to look at those buoys? Nothing on radar. You know, I drive around here and I see this on every tree except for the great myrtle. But our trees, uh, it's been unbelievable. I, the trees here are dying rapidly, rapidly. All the fungal disease, the cracking of the bark, the dry peeling of the bark off the trees. 
everyone. The death I am seeing, just in the trees alone, it's so, I don't even, even last year in South Carolina, I did not see this. But what I am seeing now, even at the start of the summer, it was not as bad as it is now. And driving around here is heartbreaking because this is what you see. And, well, if you're somebody who is in tune with nature, you can't, you can't just ignore it. We have so many dead trees on private property, and I'm wondering, do the owners of the property know that they're staring at dead trees? Do they know that the trees and along this street, there are some incredibly beautiful oak trees that did not look like this last year. The leaves are tiny. They're so thin, you can see through. There's no full coverage of, of the foliage. Look how dry this tree is. And all of these trees are around power lines. Now, I think it's this tree, or it might be another tree. A huge limb just fell with no wind. It just fell to the ground. We've had power outages here. So far, I've had three power outages and there were no hurricanes. It wasn't 140 mile per hour winds. Tiny winds bring down trees now because they're so weak. They can't withstand even tiny little winds. You see death in these trees. Everywhere you go, Everywhere you go, there's no full canopy of foliage. You can see right through the trees, the leaves are really tiny, and then if you look a little closer, you will see all of the dead branches within the tree. But you drive along this, none, the, the foliage, it's, nothing has been vibrant. There's no vibrance here. What you see is death or dying taking place right before your eyes. That white strip, that's the fungal disease. Every tree. This was not, <clears throat> I'm sorry, this was not what this street looked like even just last week. These huge, magnificent oaks are dying sitting on private property and I'm wondering what these homeowners, what are they thinking? Every tree in the apartment complex where I live, you see massive death every single day, all of them diseased. You drive around, you see dead trees right up next to trees that are trying very hard to stay alive. You don't see you know, any real vibrant green color, what you see is an awful lot of dying foliage on the trees. And I've pointed out all of the trees diseased here. Nobody cares. No one cares, guys. No one cares. But look at this. All of that brown stuff that's not because it's at the, well, I took this weeks ago, but it's not because it's September. It's not, that's a weeping willow that has been so crying hysterically all summer. They're screaming out to us that life itself is dying. I'm not being dramatic. I'm being real. This is happening. And nobody seems to care. 
you drive. I remember driving down the street when I first came here, and each year it's gotten progressively worse, except this year it's been really like wow in your face. Because you see all of the, the two toned colored trees. That's from our sun beating down on the trees. But you see, you drive along and I've slowed this, but can you see that there's no real vibrant colors here? You see a lot of, you know, the, the light browns or dark browns because these trees are dying. We get a hurricane, we get those hurricane winds. And now, this is Anderson, South Carolina. It's upstate. It's away from the coast. We get winds. We're looking at a lot of trees coming down on power lines. All of that, that brown stuff, that's death in the bushes and trees. It's all over the place. This is not the leaves turning because it's fall. It's not fall yet, but death... I can't believe how many dead trees I see every single day. Now you would think that the city of Anderson would be concerned about all of the disease with all of the power lines right next to all of these trees that are clearly visibly weakened. Are they doing anything about it? No. No. That's a half-dying tree that's sitting on private property. I've never e experienced anything like this, but just years ago, you couldn't see through these trees. Now, it's very easy. Wherever you go here, there's another parkway called East West Parkway. A couple of years ago, you couldn't see through those trees because the, 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 the foliage covered. You know, it, it just blocked your um, ability to see through it. I think this is East West. It is East West Parkway. Look at this. They're so thin. And so many are dead and dying. You see how tiny those leaves are. That means the, 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 that means the health of the tree is not good. It's in poor health. It's weak. It's diseased. And it should, um, well, just looking at this, it should alert everybody that something is very wrong here. But everybody just goes along living, I guess ignoring what they are seeing. Look at all of the, the leaves. I mean, this is the color of the leaves, really. Huh. It, it, it breaks my heart. It's, um, but, you know, to be alone, to see this, and I'm going off of a lot of comments that I've read from a lot of you that are really struggling. These are not healthy trees. These are so not healthy trees. And it's just been this past year that they look like this. Something has drastically changed here. And the change is bringing about death very quickly. But yeah, I read the comments and I know a lot of you yeah, or pink skies. 
uh, a lot of you don't have anybody to talk to. Nobody cares and you're and you're struggling and I understand. You know, you just want to be able to talk to people who are on the same page. And what you find is, you know, you have to look 24-7 at death and dying. And then you encounter it in your fellow two-leggeds that seem to be dead. Dead of, dead from, like, their care is dead. Their concern is dead. They have no worry about anything. They, they are spiritually dead. <laughs> really spiritually dead. Look at that. Uh, that was weeks ago I took this video, so this is not about fall. This is about these trees screaming at us. Screaming louder than they've ever screamed before. We are dying. Can't you see it? They're screaming something is very wrong with our environment. These two-toned colored leaves, and that in itself, you know, there are so many two-toned colored trees now. but so many trees that are really fighting to survive. You know, if a fire started in this area, this stuff would go up really fast. So the only thing that I'm nervous about are the winds that are going to take down so many of these trees, cause power outages, and It's you just go, look at the trunks of these trees, the branches, the leaves falling. Yeah, I took this, I don't know, 10 days ago. The leaves are coming down fast. Nobody seems to even notice if I bring it up to anybody. Well, then. They honestly don't register any any anything, any life in them. Does anybody ask any questions even when I point it out? No. Like, look at the leaves down. It's August. Why are they down? I don't know. You look at I'm not kidding. It's like virtually every tree. So many dead branches in the trees. I don't know what to do anymore. When I first came on YouTube, I really thought that we had a chance. I, I don't anymore. Not with the condition of our American population. And I knew, you know, in my early 20s, that people were so cut off from nature that. They didn't see the connection <laughs> between their life and nature itself. They didn't get it, nor did they care. 
And that has just gotten progressively worse. You know, it, it certainly would be easier to deal with this time if I was not so unbelievably alone in all of this. And you guys who leave the comments talking about your struggle, you can't talk to anybody about what's going on. Trust me, you know, I do read your comments and I think about, I think about you guys. I know what you're going through. It helps me get through my days. And this is only going to get worse. It's not going to get better. So as heartbreaking as it is now, wait. Stay very spiritually fit, guys. Because I think that's the only way that one can withstand watching life itself die.